All right, today we're going to talk about theoretical probability of compound events. So the last video that you probably watched was theoretical probability of simple events. This one's a tad different. We're still working with theoretical probability. Remember, theoretical means what should happen, okay? We're talking about what should happen. We haven't done an experiment yet. We don't have any data. We are technically just working with what should happen if we do this experiment, okay? So that's really kind of where we're at. Compound events basically just means that more than one thing is happening, okay? Compound events is more than one thing. So you'll notice in just a second, more than one thing is happening, okay? So let's look at this first one right here. This says the probability of the coin landing on tails, then green on the spinner. So if you want to think in your head how many events are happening, we have the coin landing on tails, then green on the spinner. So that would be two events. Two events means two fractions. Again, two events means two fractions. If there were three events, we would need three fractions. If there were four events, we would need four fractions. So two events, that means two fractions, okay? So as we work out this problem, we're going to make sure that we have two fractions to work with. So the first event says the probability of the coin landing on tails. Well, if you look down here, this is a regular old quarter. So the probability of that quarter landing on tails is one out of two. Okay, that's our first event. Then it says green on the spinner. So if we look down here, we're looking at green on the spinner. So one of these is green out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have our two events, one out of two and one out of six. And the way that we find compound probability is we multiply them. So to multiply fractions, you know you've got them. It's top times top, which is 1, and bottom times bottom, which is 12. So the probability of flipping the coin and it landing on tails and then spinning the spinner and it being green is 1 12th. 1 12th. That would be our compound probability. Okay? So let's go to the next one and try it out. The next one says the probability of yellow on the spinner, then a blue marble. Yellow on the spinner, then a blue marble. So we're still working with compound events here. I want you to think in your head how many events are happening. Yellow on the spinner, then a blue marble. Hopefully you said two events. Absolutely. Yellow on the spinner, then a blue marble. So the first event would be Spinning a yellow on the spinner. So on the spinner, one of them are yellow out of the six. So that would be our first fraction. Then a blue marble. So if we look at our bag of marbles, one, two, two of them are blue out of ten. Okay, so one out of six is our first event. Two out of ten is our second event. And we just said that the way we find compound probability is to multiply to multiply fractions, you know you've got them. It's top times top, which is 2, bottom times bottom, which is 60. So 2 out of 60, we can absolutely simplify that. So probably we'll go ahead and do that. I can divide those both by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 60 divided by 2 is 30. So our probability of yellow on the spinner, then a blue marble, would be 1 out of 30. That's definitely not super likely. I would say our first experiment that we did, the answer was 1 12th. That is definitely more likely than the 1 30th. Okay. The last one that we're going to look at, it says the probability of a red marble without replacement than a red marble. So I want you to think for just a second to yourself, how many events are happening here? So we said red marble without replacement, then a red marble. That would definitely be two events, two events. So red marble and red marble. The only difference is this word right here, and I'm going to highlight it really quickly, this phrase, without replacement, without replacement. So we're going to talk about what that means here in just a second. But for right this second, let's do the first event only, the probability of 
drawing a red marble, one, two, three, out of ten. Okay, we know that. Three out of ten. So let's say we draw the red marble, and now the red marble that we drew first is gone. Did everybody see that? Let me do it again. So the first event says to draw a red marble without replacement. That means we're not putting it back. So we take our red marble and we drew it out of our bag. It is gone. Now it is no longer in the bag as we draw another marble. So now it says then the next event is to draw a red marble. So now there are only two red marbles out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine total things. Notice there was three red marbles. I drew one and did not put it back. So now there are only two left in the bag. There were 10 total and now there are only nine. Okay. Same thing. The great thing is we find compound probability the same every time we multiply the fractions to multiply fractions. You know, you've got them. It's top times top, which is going to be six and bottom times bottom, which is going to be 90. Okay, and I can do some simplification here. You guys would probably divide these by 3. 6 divided by 3 is going to be 2. And 90 divided by 3 is going to be 30. Okay, I could keep going here and divide by 2. 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1. And 30 divided by 2 is going to be 15. So the probability of that happening is 1 15th. Okay, one fifteenth. So we drew a red marble. We did not put it back. And then we drew another red marble. The biggest thing to remember is this right here, this two ninths. These things were changed because this original red marble, it was right here in this bag. And when we drew it, when we drew that marble, it changed the total for our second event. Okay. So I would absolutely say that our final probability for that one was 1 out of 15. Remember, when you're working with compound events, compound events, you have as many fractions as you have events. So if you have four events, you should have four fractions. If you have seven events, you should have seven fractions. And the way that we actually solve them is to do top times top and bottom times bottom. 